and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and every other Friday, I bring you a short episode with the top diabetes stories and headlines happening now. In the News is brought to you by Edge Park. Simplify your diabetes journey with Edge Park. Our top story this week, a world-first clinical trial has found a common drug used to treat rheumatoid arthritis can suppress the progression of type 1 diabetes in recently diagnosed patients. Australian researchers say they've discovered that baricitinib can preserve the body's own insulin production. This was a very small study, 91 people between 10 and 30 years old. Everybody had type 1 and had been diagnosed within the last 100 days. Those who got the drug were able to safely and effectively preserve their body's own insulin production and suppress the progression of type 1 diabetes. This study was funded by JDRF and the research published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Earlier this month, Dexcom's G7 became compatible with two pump systems, Betabionics Islet Pump and Tandem Diabetes T-Slim X2. Current customers should have received instructions on how to download the updated software. New pumps will be shipped with the new software already loaded. Tandem has also announced their new Tandem Source platform, full launch in the U.S. with international rollout slated for next year. Anyone in the U.S. who uses a Tandem pump, as well as their doctors or healthcare providers, will now have access to the source platform. So what does it mean? On the patient side, insulin dosage data will automatically transfer from the pump to the platform by way of the T-Connect mobile app. It's going to be compiled then into reports for your doctor. Patients will also be able to use the platform to get new software updates for pumps and to reorder supplies as needed. Long term, the company hopes to use the data from users, which would be blinded, to update automated insulin dosing algorithms. New look at benefits from a plant-based diet. This research says it can reduce the risk of type 2 by 24%, and it's not just about weight loss. These researchers looked at data from more than 113,000 people. This was a large-scale British observational study conducted over 12 years. They found that normal values for cholesterol, blood sugar, inflammation, and insulin are associated with a lower risk of diabetes, as is good liver and kidney function, and a plant-based diet helped with all of those factors. The researchers do point out there is such a thing as an unhealthy plant-based diet. Those that are still high in sugary foods, refined grains, and very sugary drinks are actually associated with an increased risk of type 2. Reports of more patients with type 2 having trouble getting coverage for medication like Ozempic and Monjaro because health insurance companies are putting new restrictions in place. Now, most U.S. health plans cover GLP-1s for type 2, but many providers will prescribe it off-label for weight loss. There is another medication, Wegovy, approved for weight loss. It is the same drug as Ozempic, just packaged in a different dose and with a different name. The average number of weekly Ozempic prescriptions rose 33% between the first and third quarters of this year, but has since dropped more than 6%. And doctors and patients are bracing for changes in January. That's when individual health plans often set new coverage terms. So we're really just at the beginning of a lot of ups and downs with these new medications. And due to those ups and downs, poison control centers across the U.S. say they are seeing a steep increase in calls related to semaglutide, with some people reporting symptoms related to accidental overdoses. From January through November, the America's Poison Centers reported nearly 3,000 calls involving semaglutide. That's an increase of more than 15-fold since 2019. In 94% of calls, this medication was the only substance reported. The compounded versions of semaglutide are often very different from the patented drug. There is no generic for the semaglutide. They're really talking about Ozempic here. Many of these compounds contain semaglutide salts called semaglutide sodium or semaglutide acetate. The FDA says these forms have not been tested and have not been approved to be safe and effective the way the patented form of the medication has. But the compounded versions are popular because they can cost a lot less, especially if, see our previous story, the treatment is not covered by insurance. The name brand drugs are sold in pre-filled pens, which come with some safeguards. Patients dial to the correct dose, then you click to inject it's harder to make mistakes. The compounded versions typically come in multi-dose glass vials and you draw your own dose into syringes, which makes it easier to make mistakes. 
A look at type 2 and telehealth. It looks like patients who received endocrinology care through telehealth alone had poor glycemic outcomes compared with those who received in-person or hybrid care. These study findings contrast with previous research, including a study published in early 2022 that said telehealth maintained quality of care and led to better health outcomes for patients with type 2 during the COVID-19 pandemic. These researchers say there needs to be a lot more study. They want to look specifically at in-person support, things that happen at in-person appointments like education, sharing more data with home blood glucose tests, that sort of thing that they suspect have not consistently translated to telehealth. Medtronic's deal to buy a South Korea-based insulin patch pump maker is off. Back in May, Medtronic announced a $738 million deal to buy EO Flow, which makes EO Patch a tubeless, wearable, and fully disposable insulin delivery device. EO Patch has already been launched in Korea and Europe, and the company submitted it to the U.S. FDA this past January. Right back to the news in just a minute, but this episode of Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Edge Park. You've worked hard your whole life, and diabetes management shouldn't slow you down. Edge Park is your trusted go-to supplier for all things diabetes management, supplies, and continuous glucose monitors, like Medtronic's Guardian Sensor, Dexcom G7, and the Freestyle Libre 3. Edge Park accepts most insurance plans, including select coverage for Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans, and Edge Park navigates insurance complexities for you and handles the paperwork. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Edge Park logo. Back to the news, and we've got an update on non-invasive continuous glucose monitoring. We have talked about no labs before. Diabetes Daily has an update. I'll link that up in the show notes like I do with every story you hear on In the News. The update here is that no labs says they do expect to be in front of the FDA in the second half of 2024 and that they expect to have an FDA cleared device in 2025. The company uses something they have termed bio RFID. It's a radio signal that's basically bouncing off the organic material in your body. So far, the MARD, the mean absolute relative difference, the way CGM is measured, comes in at 11.27%. You can compare that to the Freestyle Libre, which comes in just under 8, and the Dexcom G7, which comes in just over 8. Just for some perspective, I was doing some research on something else, and I came across some marred numbers from 2014. The Medtronic and Light back then had a marred of 18.6%, and the Dexcom G4 had a marred of 12.6%. Again, that was back in 2014. So it's worth noting that the FDA certainly has approved CGMs with those kinds of numbers, but not for dosing insulin. We'll keep watching this. And finally, the American Diabetes Association has released its Standards of Care in Diabetes for 2024. This is their annual set of comprehensive guidelines for managing all types of diabetes based on the latest scientific research and clinical trials. From their press release, they say notable updates include new updates in managing obesity in people with diabetes, guidance on screening and the use of teplizumab approved to delay the onset of type 1 diabetes that is now called t more guidance on the use of new obesity medications like Ozempic and Monjaro, a focus on screening and management of people with diabetes and other disabilities, updates on cultural sensitivity in diabetes self-management education, and more detail on emphasis on psychosocial screening protocols to better identify diabetes distress. There's a lot more to this, and you can find much more in the show notes. All right, coming up next week on Diabetes Connections, the original show, which focuses on type 1 and people who use insulin, we're going to be sharing a panel that we recorded at one of our Mom's Night Out events all about independence and treating emergency low blood sugar using emergency glucagon. And on Diabetes Connections Type 2, we have wrapped up our limited launch So new episodes will start dropping again in January. January 3rd is the next scheduled episode for the Type 2 show. We're going to be talking about diabetes distress. I thought that was interesting to see in the ADA standards of care. I've got a whole episode on it with a group that is also looking for people with Type 2 for a paid study. So that is all coming up in January. That's it for In the News. If you like it, please share it. I'm Stacey Sims. I will see you back here soon. Until then, happy holidays and be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.